Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Peter here with Real Estate Trends and Market Updates. Here with, um, so there's this article that came out, uh, Barbara Corcoran, and I think a lot of people know who she is. She's been on Shark Tank for years. Um, she was on the Bigger Pockets podcast just the other day, and it was with her son. So she unveiled her real golden rule, and um, this is what I talk about investing, I talk about buying real estate and everything in between. Um, her golden rule was buying a property with 20% down. Um, it's not always been the case. Uh, it used to be 10% down, but with, I think, prices and everything else. And obviously, um, if you do a second home, you can do 10% down. But ultimately, if you're doing um, a investment property, you have to have 20% down unless it's more than um, one unit. So if it's two, three, four units, you got to do 20% down and then on up. And um, usually those hit about 25% down typically if you're doing an investment. So um, at least in California, what I've seen, but that being said, that in California doesn't make sense. Um, usually you have to do some type of value add to the property and, you know, um, consistently add to that property to make it make sense. Um, this is a very good rule to look at because one, you instantly have equity in the property. Um, you got to have skin in the game as they say, and that's skin in the game for ultimately the investor, or uh, not the investor, pardon me, it may be an investor, but typically it's a bank and portfolio bank. They want to know that you can actually um, bring some money to the table. And then in case of some type of economic craziness, um, you still have some equity. So you could sell it potentially and be in a better, well, not a better spot, but you could be in a good spot with 20% in. And let's say the market goes down 10%, you still have 10% in, you could sell it and ultimately get out paying agent fees and um, move on to potentially the next project down the road. And they want to know that you can do that. So, um, that's, that's one of her, um, things. And, and I agree with that. It's, you know, making sure that you put down enough money, skin in the game, and then ultimately doing that and making sure that you have, um, people that are going to pay your rent appropriately. So let's talk about a little bit of people paying rent. You want to make sure that you are qualifying these people appropriately, you look at banks and they want to make sure that the borrower is the best borrower, you know, a, a type A type of borrower, if you will. Um, someone that's got, you know, they're putting 20% down. They have a good W-2 job. They can source their income. You know, they've been in it for a long time, five, seven, 10 years, 15 years. Um, so they want the stability to know that they ultimately can really lend to this person and there, there's never going to be a disruption in this person's payments. Um, so, for you as a landlord, you need to make sure of all this if you can. So one is you got to make sure that they have a good little nest egg. So let's say your security deposit is 2000 and your rent is 2000 that you're requiring for the house or property and they have 4000 in their account. I feel like that's a little slim because all of a sudden, are they going to be able to feed themselves the next month? Um, so you want to look at being able to qualify those people at two and a half to three X on that. So you all of a sudden rent the property out and it's um, 2000, 2000. I would say you need roughly about um, 12,000 to have them in their account. So if something goes awry, they can come back and they have some reserves to, you know, pay for that flat tire, pay for that oil change or pay for, you know, the car going into the shop, um, and not dip into, you know, some type of, um, you know, credit card or something like that. Then all of a sudden it's going to bleed over into your account, um, and not paying you rent. The, the other thing is, okay, well, does the income meet it? So your rent's 2000 a month and they're grossing, 2000. Well, that means they're probably taking home $1,100, $1,200. They're not going to be able to make that. But I would say if you two and a half to three X that, so if they're looking to rent something for 2000 and they're making 6,000 a month in gross, that's good because they're ultimately going to um, be paying. And let's say they get paid by, uh, by monthly, you're going to ultimately have them making roughly 2,500, you know, 3000, um, a, a paycheck. So all of a sudden, you know, they'll be getting 4,000, 4,500, you know, maybe, maybe 5,500 tops. And you can be in a situation and that's a month and you can be in a situation where they have 3,500 ish, 3,000, maybe 2,800 ish above what the rent is. So they can pay for a car. They can pay to go out to, you know, go shop for food and everything else. 
those are things that you really need to look at and say, okay, this is how I devise a plan and make it make sense. Um, the other thing I would say, the last thing on that is um, if you can do and provide or get them to provide a background check, that's very crucial because you can check on any type of evictions, any type of, um, you know, something odd that's, you know, within that scenario, for instance, like if they've had a criminal record of, you know, two DUIs in the last three years, um, does that put a trend together that they may not be a good fit for you as a tenant? Is their credit good? So is their credit 500, you know, 590? Or is it, you know, 790? Those things very, you know, are very imperative for you to look at. So it's a, goes, okay, hey, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense. So um, hopefully these tips, um, as you look at these types of, um, you know, interviews with people that are very successful, they make you go, huh, yeah, maybe I should apply that to what I got going on. So she talks about 20% down and then also getting a tenant to pay that uh, mortgage or pay the rent. And, you know, that's a, that's one thing that, you know, a lot of landlords, obviously that's why, you know, landlordship uh, people look into a lot is because you're going to gain equity. People are going to pay down your principal and interest and everything else. So um, all in all, I want you guys to to take this nugget and go use this for you in your next investment. Okay. Hey, 20% down. And then once I get that person into, you know, the property, if I hire a property manager, at least I know what they're talking about when they come to me and say, hey, this person is qualified because they're XXXX, you know, these things, you know, that I just talked about. They're two and a half X on the gross income. They're two and a half X on, you know, money in the account. They're they're also, you know, at a 725 credit score. That's great. They've never had an eviction. These things are very, very important for you to pay attention to when you're looking at renting out for, you know, um, a person. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. I will um, do another podcast early next week for you guys. It's going to be, I think I have a guest coming up uh, next week and then I'll do another podcast for you too. I know I was putting out two and then one to one got a little busy, but I'll get um, another couple out here for everybody. So this gives, uh, you know, some more valuable tools for your toolbox. Thanks so much. If you guys can go to our YouTube channel, just search Peter McKernan and you can find our YouTube channel. All these podcasts, including the interviews, including other videos are on there. So I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys next week.